Many years ago today, the course of history changed. The largest group of military forces ever assembled pushed across the western coast of France, engaged in a fierce battle with German troops. 3,000 American soldiers, sailors, and pilots died in the first 24 hours of the D-Day invasion. Their sacrifice is seen now as the start of the end of World War II. Among those who landed on the beaches of Normandy, an East Tennessee soldier from Sweetwater who spent 400 days under enemy fire as he helped lead Allied forces to victory. In 2014, 10 News anchor John Becker caught up with the then 93-year-old veteran as he prepared to return to France. The War Room in Clinton Riddle's Sweetwater home is a meticulously kept museum of medals, posters, and pictures. I've got to where we landed and everything. Treasures like this hunk of canvas from a World War II glider connect him to one of the greatest surprise attacks in the history of warfare. Well, we fought for 33 days and nights without relief. This thing's so fragile. His room full of keepsakes tie this 93-year-old soldier to a corner of France where he is about to return 70 years after first landing on D-Day, June 6, 1944. I just hoping to see some of my friends and uh, people that I got acquainted with. Riddle was a part of an almost 4,000-man glider unit on D-Day. Close to 30 troops crammed inside each glider, ready to fight as a group when they landed. The goal of attack planners was to tow the gliders across the English Channel and cut them loose. The landing behind enemy lines in France would help add firepower and protect troops advancing from the beaches. That was the plan. About halfway over the channel, our tow plane uh, lost power, and we got down to about 150 or 200 feet of the uh, channel. You could see the waves are coming up. We ran into a lot of uh, anti-aircraft fire. After surviving the flight, Riddle and his team almost died on the landing. And we cut the top out of a tree with the left wing as we went in and, and hit real hard jaw. In fact, it was so hard, the field radio that I was carrying, it broke the antenna off of it. Moments later, a photographer snapped this picture of Riddle fixing his radio. And minutes after that, he was dodging German bullets, much like his fellow soldiers a few miles away on the D-Day beaches. Have observed so many give their life there on the beach. Uh, you can't help from uh, have a feeling, well, you, you just thank a good Lord that you were one of them. Riddle returned to those beaches to mark the 50th anniversary of D-Day. On that trip, he managed to find one of his old foxholes. I couldn't believe it. It's still there. And he snapped a photo of the clump of trees in the French countryside where this farm boy from East Tennessee crash landed into combat. People say, how in the world can you remember all those dates and things? They're branded in my brain. It is a day branded into history, and for this Sweetwater veteran who lived it. I'm lucky I came home alive. Thanks, Mr. Veteran, for what you have done for me. It's time once again to make a return trip. <laughs> And Clinton Riddle traveled to France in 2014 to honor the fallen service members on D-Day's 70th anniversary and then went back in 2019 on the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Clinton Riddle died peacefully on the evening of December 3rd, 2019 in his hometown of Sweetwater, Tennessee. He was 98 years old.